We had a state of play happen yesterday, and while it was definitely a smaller state of play than usual, there were still some cool announcements that I do want to go over, a couple of new game announcements and everything like that, so let's get right into it. Dead Stranding Director's Cut, we got some details on that, so a lot of people were worried that they were going to have to drop $50 to play this Director's Cut. Obviously, it's going to be available via an update as well. Uh, if you want to buy the game on the PlayStation 5, there's a standard version for $50 and a digital deluxe for $60, however, obviously you can get Death Stranding itself for PlayStation 4 considerably cheaper than $50. You can get it for like 18 bucks, I believe it is, at Gamefly right now, and then you can just buy the upgrade and you'll be good to go. And there's going to be quite a lot of new content coming to this. Death Stranding Director's Cut was noted to be packed with a ton of new content and enhanced gameplay features. We are introducing more weapons, equipment, and vehicles, a variety of new modes, missions, and areas to explore, expand storylines, and enhancements to the UI. We will also be adding new features, uh, including friend play and leaderboards. More news on that coming soon, as noted on the PlayStation blog. A lot more information is available there, along with the PlayStation 5 features. You've got haptic feedback, you've got adaptive trigger resistance, sound effects in 3D audio, um, ultra-fast SSD load times, of course, and then you've got a performance mode with upscaled 4K and up to 60 FPS, or fidelity mode in native 4K, both with ultra-wide and HDR support. And they have also defined the upgrade path. Again, if you already own the game, you can get the upgrade for $10, and that's going to be the route to go, especially if, even if you're a new player, you can buy the game pretty cheap and then get the upgrade for $10. Instead of dropping $50 on the game, much like the FF7 scenario where inner grade was uh, $70 and nobody should be spending $70 on that game. I mean, at this stage of the game, loved FF7, but you guys get the deal. Dead Stranding is a game that I always recommend people to play. I know not everybody was super, super into it, but I thought it had a very compelling narrative experience. And it was a game that, yes, maybe if you're not the biggest fan of UPS Simulator, you're not going to be the biggest fan of it. But I also thought it had a lot more to like than dislike. And it's a game that I did think a push the boundaries for a lot of games and um you know a game that took risks and that's what gaming needs to do if you do want future games to evolve and i feel like death stranding did a pretty good job with that excited to check out this director's cut and that is dropping september 24th so right around the corner so we are getting ghost of tsushima the upgrade for that and then death stranding the upgrade for that in september wish that the upgrade itself was free and then the extra content was to pay for but it looks like that's the sony way to do things that they're thinking about doing where if they want to give you the upgrade and they want to bundle it in with like extra content so they can charge you ten dollars or whatever they want to do in the form of a re-release and i can see why financially they want to do that it's just comparatively speaking to what you know um a lot of other publishers doing that is a little bit of a bummer. But again, that'll be dropping on the 24th. Also, Fist Forged in Shadow Torch is coming September 7th. This is a game that I've been looking forward to for quite a while. Was unsure if it was going to end up dropping this year, but now we know it will be coming September the 7th. It's described as a diesel punk Metroidvania title. Really like the look of the game and some of the gameplay elements that they are going for. And it's a game that, yes, it's been going a little bit under the radar. But generally speaking, and from what I've noticed, when Metroidvanias come out, if they deliver, they end up gaining a lot of traction after the fact and a lot of people take notice of them seems like it's a genre a lot of people do dig the game notes seamless maps filled with challenges to explore an arcade combat system with seamless switching between three weapons and a diesel punk aesthetics crafted with unreal engine 4 excited for that getting a september 7th release will be interesting to see what they price that at i think anything over 30 dollars is going to be a little bit of a stretch and ideally we would like it at 20 dollars but hey, we'll see how that ultimately turns out. Next up, we have a brand new co-op multiplayer shooter in Arcade Get On. That'll be coming to PlayStation 5 and PC. Save the local arcade from a mega corporation. Uh, the PC version will be coming to the Epic Game Store, and early access is available today for $19.99. The game notes rise up and play with up to three friends in this ever-evolving cooperative multiplayer shooter. Explore multiple biomes, minigames, find hidden chests, and defeat numerous enemies and bosses. Gilly, the owner of a local arcade, is trying to save his business from a faceless mega corporation to do so he takes all the top arcade games and connects them all to make a super game unfortunately the mega corporation fun fun co hacks the game and injects a virus you and your friends need to save the game and the last hometown arcade so more of a zany premise but looks to be a pretty unique multiplayer title nonetheless again play solo or with up to three friends in cooperative multiplayer seems like this is a game you definitely want to play with co-op and you've got primary 13 to 35 battle royale and action adventure game players is the target audience so yeah there you go with that secondary shooter and co-op gamers who are looking for an easier entry game that can grow with them in difficulty 
The game is scheduled for a release hopefully sometime later in 2021, but again, early access is available right now. All right, here's another interesting one. PlayStation VR owners, you're getting a pretty notable release. Moss Book 2 has been announced for PlayStation VR. Moss is one of the best received VR titles that was released on PlayStation VR, so it's nice to see a follow-up in Moss Book 2. Polyarch has noted, we were blown away by the reception from fans to the Moss story. Players built an extraordinary bond with Quill, countless enemies, tweets, streams, and fan art postings made us feel like we had created something special. We've since poured our hearts into ensuring Book 2 is a worthy continuation of the journey and hope fans will enjoy her next chapter of her story. So you can check out more information in the description box below, but it is building upon the story that was already created. And again, this was the game, uh, a game I should say, that was received very well for PSVR. Like alongside this, there were some other games, but I always remember Moss standing out as one of a game people really enjoyed on PlayStation VR. So you'll be able to check that out uh, hopefully sometime in 2022 that's what i would assume but we'll find out hopefully sooner rather than later and lastly a new battle royale title hunters arena legends is coming august the 3rd this is a game that is currently in early access on pc and it's got a mixed reception 50 percent off for 9.99 in early access if you do want to pick it up on pc 819 steam review 63 percent positive on that end it's a 30 player pvp and pve combat based battle royale sent uh, set in the ancient asia survive and become the deadliest hunter in the world of the hunters arena visually it looks really good so from that standpoint that's cool hopefully this is a game that makes some progress through its early access period and it's better by the time of its august 3rd release but that's right around the corner so let's just hope we get a decent battle royale here i know a lot of you guys aren't big fans of the genre at this stage of the game but still has a large audience and if you look at the most popular games in the world today battle royale is still at the top of the list in terms of games that a lot of people are playing but that's gonna wrap up this one again what do you think of state of play yesterday were you you know enamored by the show did you enjoy it let me know your thoughts death straining director's uh, director's cut let me know your thoughts on the price of that that's out september 24th fist uh forged in shadow torch out september 7th super excited for that i think that's going to be a sleeper for a lot of people arcade get on that is coming as well moss book 2 hopefully that's 2022 and hunter's arena legends is dropping august 3rd that's going to wrap up this one sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below thank you for watching and goodbye Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.